Welcome to the October 12th, 2020 Advance Report for McAllen Group clients and NetworthRadio.com listeners. I'm Spencer McAllen, your financial weatherman, with your fast-paced weekly tour of the global financial markets. Important events this week and certainly election anticipation versus the markets, we're going to dissect the money flows versus politics. Using politics to guide a portfolio short term is a little bit like trying to play golf with your laptop. It's just the wrong tool. And we're going to cover a few things about election outcomes and what's actually happened uh, to moderation in policy from what we're hearing would happen in a Biden versus Trump administration, which is the big question right now. There were some statements this week that relate to that. Goldman Sachs came out and said, oh, we'll raise our forecasts for growth under a Biden administration. And part of the reason they said it is they're not going to do anything much different through 2021. And the Trump tax cuts were originally going to be repealed, but those Trump tax cuts actually last until 2025. And they've already, uh, the Biden camp has already said we're not going to repeal those. They've done a 180 on energy, realizing that they can't do without fossil fuels, and we'll cover that subject too. It's not politics driving the Dow day to day, but there is something about politics driving the Dow day to day, and that is financial steroids, fiscal steroids, and monetary Adderall, and that's part of our topic right now. We, we call that voter Xanax, if you will. What's the effect of all that artificial stimulation? Eventually, it's not good. And this weekend's program at NetworthRadio.com goes deeper. McGowan Group Asset Management, a team of nine that cares. Registered investment advisor, fiduciary, based right here at the Crescent in Dallas. And you can upgrade your plan in a Zoom call or you can come to the office with safe operating procedures. So, in the case of what we're seeing here, the Dow 29,500, the low 18,000. Is this too far too fast? Primarily driven by technology stocks, both the Dow and the S&P, and certainly the NASDAQ. Overpriced technology will have a comeuppance and we're saying what would be the solutions from here because money flows are already starting to move towards value, meaning items that have good growth rates that are not grossly overpriced. Well, the Dow Jones Industrial Average had a big week. This correction midweek was the failure in stimulus talks, right? So the market's somewhat dependent on artificial stimulation closing the week at about 28,600. Stimulus from here, is it the key point? It'll probably come in pieces as needed, but not much before the election. That was part of this downdraft, but it didn't matter by the end of the week. Why? Earnings reports are gonna come out, and we're about to get to earnings too. All right, here's earnings. S&P 500, that's not good. Quarterly earnings dropped from 40 down to about 23 and projected to go back to about 35. Well, the indexes have recovered on the strength of technology getting higher multiples. But this says it takes until the end of 2021 before you start to see record profits from the S&P 500. It's range bound until that happens, but the earnings reports are coming up. That's one of the keys to the money flows driving the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, this is a, an optimistic forecast. Bloomberg tends to be optimistic in their S&P earnings forecast, but by 2022, a record with distance. Now, does that happen? How does it unfold? Well, if you've got an overvaluation in one sector, it's likely, as that corrects, it'll be a flat market. So getting paid to wait is the key and picking your sectors very carefully. The other is fixed income. Yields on a 30-year treasury this week did spike up. We're going to cover that as well. The, the yield on the 30-year treasury went to 1.6. You can see it kind of creeping up here from the shutdown lows. This is 
the, uh, the 10 year treasury. That's why mortgages very quickly went below 3%. The housing market therefore became COVID immune. That's why residential housing is doing actually quite well and nobody would have expected it during the shutdown. Here we go with the T-bill. We're sitting on a 90 day T-bill at just below 0.1%. Money markets have gone to zero. That's the key money flow right there. With money markets at zero, what's going to work best? Um, we've talked about global high yield. We've talked about medical dividend companies and the energy sector, which is a great source of cash flow energy infrastructure, which woke up this week. Moving to the money flows this week, the S&P 500, these are the, uh, the exchange traded funds in different sectors, 34 billion flowed out. The energy sector, this is year to date, 34 billion out of this particular ETF. Most of that flowed into the tech sector, 15 billion here. The energy sector is actually positive in money flows for the year, woke up nicely this week. The strongest performing sector up about 4% uh, on, on this daily report we did right here and up for the week as well. This is money flows out of tech and that's been occurring since September. Well, what this does tell us is we want to look at different spots that are a better bargain. GDP this quarter, here's the big number on this chart. This quarter, third quarter, is about to be announced at the end of October. 29% growth. That number had been an anemic sub 10 after the 31% implosion. That recovers a big part of the economy and the earnings reports coming out are likely to reflect that recovery. The fourth quarter is 4% that came down because nobody's going to get a big stimulus package. There have already been about $6 trillion in stimulus in addition to what the Federal Reserve did. Now, there's a comeuppance for this and we'll cover that in next week's program. This is the Federal Reserve. You can see what happened to the balance sheet. What does a balance sheet mean for the Fed? That is electronically printed money, essentially. It had been about $4 trillion. You see this creep up right here, other assets? 4.3 trillion, what happened? That was the repo crisis we had in December and January. They put another 300 billion back in after tightening monetary policy. What does that mean? Well, there was too much leverage in the system. The repo market is a, a complex way for institutions to borrow more money from a different source and the Federal Reserve put some welfare in there and boom, Here's the infusion to prevent an absolute disaster depression. Probably did the right thing. Now the balance sheet at about $7 trillion. They pulled it back just a little bit. These other assets are actually corporate bonds that they put money into and other assets to, to keep the economy going. They dropped rates to zero. Your money market's going to be zero. Vanguard Prime money markets closed to new investors uh, just for parking money you may end up getting a charge from your bank next year. That's going to drive more money into different places. Switching gears a little bit. What is this? Long term solar index. This run up right here in the solar index is anticipation of a Biden administration green policies, plus the fact that solar's become profitable. This right here is when the subsidies expire. That right there, don't be doing that at the high because in 2008, Boom, solar had a big run, became very popular and still an absolute disaster from that point. So you have to be very careful when and what and how. What's the difference? Companies that make money and don't be buying it till it crosses into making money on, on hype or anticipation. But that's the expiration of the subsidies. This is the waking up of solar actually profitable. But still, renewables are about 12% of the nation's energy supply, natural gas, the primary source of electricity, and here you go. Natural gas market is back above where it was looking all the way back to April and pre-pandemic levels, but this is year to date on natural gas. That was January before the pandemic and now up here at 276 
It means natural gas flow has been restored through the pipelines. What does that mean for the investment side? Well, we're seeing the the restoration of the economy more gradually. Yes, there are some things that look like a V-shaped recovery and Nike swoosh when it comes to jobs and that changes the money flows to more value oriented assets, especially those that pay cash flow because of those zero money markets. That's the key to 2021 success with a strategy that by 2025 earns a lot of money for sitting still and some potential gains in 2021. We'll cover more about that next week. Be sure to subscribe networthradio.com for the extended program where we discuss what happens under a Biden administration versus a Trump. We'll be back next week with the best in financial news. Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel. I'm Spencer McGowan, President McGowan Group, your financial weatherman. We sponsor each week networthradio.com broadcast that has the charts and graphs, many of which you saw today. We also sponsor this YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe for fast breaking news, an alert when we post something in a market condition that may have changed. Our goal is to help you as an investor make the right decisions at the right time. And that's part of what this YouTube channel is about as well as NetWorthRadio.com. I am well served with a team of 10 people, including myself. And that team that cares is actually made up of people who devoted to your net profits and your success as well as excellence in service. If you want an educational experience to follow this up, get to NetWorthRadio.com, TheMcGowanGroup.com. Right here, we disclose our net client experience all the way back to 2001. What that includes, the bear market cycles of 02, 08, 2018, and the recoveries through the most recent quarter. That is true education of investors and exactly how our clients have done disclosed right here. Further disclosures, value at risk of loss. Yes, investments are going to fluctuate. That's part of the reason for this broadcast and that can actually work to your advantage. We'll build that into your plan. So I urge you to go to NetWorthRadio.com, fill out the preliminary client questionnaire, a free one-hour brainstorming session by phone or at the Crescent in Dallas, and we will map out a multi-year plan for you and your family that's appropriate. Just because we talk about a security on this broadcast or any securities doesn't make it a recommendation for your portfolio until you have that written plan. Thank you for tuning in today and we'll be back next week as your financial weatherman.